Our next fighter making his way to the cage, Rene Connaught. One of the most experienced fighters on tonight's card is Rene Conat. The 25-year-old has a camo record of two wins and five losses. Don't take those five losses as a sign of weakness, though. Those are five losses against extremely game opponents. Like tonight, we'll see Ian Quinto, Marcus Bonilla, past loss against Isaac Velasco. These are not easy fighters to fight against. No, and you know, out of, out of those seven fights, five have won the distance. So that's something that you, you, you at least know he could, cardio is probably not the issue in, in these six minute fights and that he has some ring experience. He's fought seven different guys, so he, he, know, he gets to a different look from seven different people. So he's got some experience where nothing is completely brand new when this fight starts. Part of that experience is that tonight's fight between Rene Connaught and Austin Davis will be without shin guards because they both match that minimum requirement of three or more fights in order to go with no shin guards as amateur fighters. Rene Connaught stands five feet, seven inches tall, a righty out of Los Angeles, California, fighting with Submission Factory. He's a striker and gappler, but in particular, he has a pretty good wrestling base. Yeah, the, the, I think the wrestler base is going to help him in this fight. You know, um, he tends to be a little reckless, does open himself up for submissions here and there, but that's fine. And, you know, maybe he's tightened that up this for this fight. And, you know, let's see if he's just more aggressive. And, you know, he's, he's coming off a win, and he's been fighting since 2011. So it's only going to help him. You know, you're only going to get better. You, you, you usually don't get worse the more you fight. You know, unless, unless you get knocked out every time, then you sometimes get worse. But he's not getting knocked out. He got subbed twice and he lost five decisions. So there's there's ring experience there. And he got subbed in the third in one of his fights. So all but one have gone into the third round. So that's that's something to tip your hat for, if I had a hat on. And his opponent making his way to the cage, Halston Davis. On the other side of the cage is 19-year-old Austin Davis fighting out of Goleta, California with Valhalla Fight Team, ETC. The young man has one win and two losses. His last loss coming here on May 19th at the U of MMA against Khalid Jihad Shannon in a fantastic fight, a really great split decision that some say was a little controversial. Some did say that. I remember them saying that. And uh, no, he, Austin Day is really good. I, I'm actually a fan of his. I'm, I'm a fan of all the fighters here, guys. But uh, I, I like his style. Uh, good fighter, good cardio, uh, keeps a good pace, uh, throws a lot of kicks. He tries creative stuff, which I'm a big fan of, you know, progressing the sport to do creative stuff. And he, you know, he, he's, he's well rounded. So this right here has a good chance of being a really well-rounded fight. Also, it looks like a professional MMA fight right now. We have no shin pads, and we don't have any rash guards, so we have some shirtless men fight each other, which I'm a fan of. And that's the way men should fight, typically, is shirtless, all the way across. You know, Austin it's... Davis, first win back in 2012, two losses 2013. But one thing you can take away from both of those losses is his resiliency. He does not fade. He keeps pushing even when taking damage. And that's, an, like I, I mentioned earlier, it's a quality and a, a skill that is really hard to teach. You could express as much as you want as a coach to keep pushing while you're hurt or in the pocket taking strikes, but that's a thing that, you know, some people that have hard upbringings, people that got into a lot of fights as a kid, so things like that, stuff that toughen you as a younger person translates to good fighters later in their life because it's just a natural instinct. A natural instinct you can't really teach. Now, if you notice, both these guys in the past have struggled with submission defense. You know, we already mentioned Renee's troubles with submission game earlier in the past. Uh, Austin Davis as well, one of his two losses by submission, and he's fighting against Jihad Shannon. Now, let's be fair, he did take an early low blow that may have changed the tenor of that fight, but he was defending against a lot of submissions in that fight as well, including a couple really tight triangles. 
which begs the question, am I, you know what, I read a thing that begs the question actually doesn't mean what I'm about to say. So Scratch begs the question, which brings up the important idea that when two guys don't want to get in the submission game, we might be in for a striking battle. Tends to happen sometimes. Definitely tends to happen. And uh, we'll see what happens to that right, right now. Uh, let's just hope for a good fight. They both look in good shape and ready to go. Austin Davis already high energy, ready to go. Renee Connaught looking extremely focused and calm. You know, it's interesting to see when two fighters are so different in their energy levels. Our next fight of the evening is brought to you by WSS Shoes Style Selection. Over 50 locations to serve you. Scheduled for three two-minute rounds in the 145-pound division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a Muay Thai and submission fighter. He steps into the cage with a record of two wins and five losses. He stands at five feet, seven inches tall and weighing at 144.2 pounds. Representing the submission factory from Pasadena, California, Romney! And his opponent across the cage, a fighting out of the red corner, a Sambo practitioner. He comes to the cage with a record of one win, two losses, stands at five feet, 10 inches tall, and weighing officially at 144.2 pounds, fighting with Valhalla Training Center from Goleta, California, Austin Davis. Man in charge of the action, Larry Landless. Get ready for three two-minute rounds here in the 145-pound featherweight division at the University of Mixed Martial Arts. Austin Davis in the black and red shorts, Renee Kona in the black shorts. It starts here. Fighters touch gloves circling early. Feints coming from Davis. Quick left hook from Renee. Another left hook from Renee. Nice striking from Renee, but he takes a shot, takes another shot, tries to get himself an outside single. He's pressed up against us. Some sort of under over position. Good striking early from both fighters. Really nice right hand from Austin Davis. Renee, though, pressing the action here against the cage. Press. Right here, I'd, yeah, I'd like to see maybe a, some sort of takedown, but, butt scoot him out, maybe a low single, maybe a high singles, you know, run the pipe. There we go. That's exactly what I was looking for, but he does leave himself. He puts himself in the guard, and we're looking for some sort of submission from Austin. We were discussing earlier that dangerous submission defense of, of Rene Connaught, and right He's now, Austin tough, Davis. He's tough, a tough submission right here. He's got to be careful. He's going to try to slam himself out of it, but he's extending his arm. His arm is almost out. If he steps his left leg, like puts it right next to his right leg, he should be able to get out. But right there, he puts himself back in it. And it looks like there's going to be a transition to a triangle. Austin now, Davis is going to transition to that. Now that's looking kind of tight right here. This could be a finish that's a really tight triangle. He needs to, you know, we hear the cornerman yelling, hammer fist the face when you should be defending against submission. Maybe put the knee on the opponent's face. But now he's transitioning back to the arm bar and he looks to get out of it and he's clear. Nice submission defense. More punches to the face here from Renee in that submission defense. Great job getting out of that. That is tiring. Davis did expend a lot of energy because he had two fairly tight submissions and one decently tight submission. So that does take a lot out of you. But, you know, I say that's an Austin Davis round based on he hurt Austin Davis with a couple punches and he hurt uh, Connett, uh, Connaught? Connaught. Yeah, there we hurt, go. Hurt Connaught with a few punches and uh, had him defending submissions the whole round. But definitely yeah. both guys are game. Really great work in this first round from Austin Davis. I loved that striking early on in those opening moments. A lot of straight punches, caught Renee a couple of times. And those submission attempts, that's three very fluid submission attempts that put Renee in a lot of danger. One thing Renee Connaught didn't have. I'm trying to say a joke and it didn't work. I'll, I'll come back to the next I'll come back to the next round. Be sure to check out the down to scrap table on the club. You know, we were talking main before about submission and being barrel. the danger down of both these scrap. guys. And so far, the submission game way in Austin Davis's, uh, and Davis's camp. What do you tell Renee between rounds here? He was getting tagged a bit on the feet and then putting a lot of danger on the mat. You know, I, I would tell him stick with the game plan, but you got to be careful when you do slam a guy that you are 
you could land in something really tight. You have to be careful when you pick up someone to slam that you're thinking of an immediate pass or a next move. It's great to, to slam someone, but you gotta be thinking next move ahead and next move ahead of that. Well, we'll see what the next move is here right away in round number two of this featherweight affair between Austin Davis and the black and red trunks, Renee Connaught and the black trunks. Again, Renee trying to counter strike against Austin Davis, but Austin using that length effectively so far in these striking exchanges. Huge spinning back fist by Connaught. Landed right on the temple. I don't think it did too much, but Definitely one, a nice technique. One thing about Kanat, an experienced guy like this, he's a gamer. He's been in trouble before. He's not afraid to take a punch. He knows he can fight through it. Here we have just a little under over position. Might see Davis try to lock up some sort of submission and bring it to the mat. So far, a very similar story than the first round. That first round opened up with some striking exchanges, clinch on the cage. Let's see if this goes to the ground like last time. Yeah, we definitely see Kanat still pressing the action to the ground, even though when he hit the ground, he was in a lot of danger and uh, defending the whole time. The so exact same high single slam. But see, now you see he ended up in side control rather than guard. We, we get a we stop in here. here. Possibly an injury to the right arm of Austin Davis. He looks to be in a lot of pain right now. Might be a dislocated a, elbow. That's exactly what it looks like. Possibly a fracture. The doctors taking best possible care here of young Austin Davis. You know, safety is always paramount, but always. this is a fight. And things, fight. We, things can go south. We do hope the best for Austin Davis, that his arm, we hope his arm is not broken, that it is just a dislocation. You know, that's the one thing no one ever thinks about with those big slams. You think about possibly hitting your head really hard, getting the breath knocked out of you, but you have four limbs, and those limbs can get caught under stuff. Well, if you do remember, I was uh, I was actually at the fight. It was uh, uh, when, uh, what's his name, fought Shogun in, in Pride, uh, Mark Coleman, mm -hmm. and Shogun posted his hand to the mat and snapped his arm, and that that happens. It's, 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 a, it's a freak accident, and it's... But it happens. Nothing worse than an injury in the cage, especially in a fight that's so competitive as this one. You know, you were at, at the moment that the fight was stopped, you had Renee inside control, looking to really get a better advantage than what he did in the first round. Yeah, we just hope for the best here. This is, you know, safety is the key, but, you know, it's, we just hope for the best. Austin Davis in a lot of pain, but you can see really tough guy. He's trying to get up on his own if he can, but that is a that looks like a pretty nasty break there Austin. in the arm of Austin Davis. Crowd giving applause for him, been able to stand back up. You know, as tough of an injury that is, it just shows more of how, a, how much a tough guy Austin Davis is to walk out of there on his own. We're waiting now for the referee's official decision. Not a way anyone wants to see a fight end, but that's gonna go in the books as a victory for Rene Kanat. That's a TKO. TKO for this guy? Official call from the referee. It's gonna be a TKO in round number two for Rene Kanat. And I would love to see a round three of that fight. Rene was turning that fight around. You have to think that he was gonna have the advantage in round number two. Well, he, yeah, he got himself into a dominant position. Again, you gotta hope for the best from Austin Davis. He's a young guy, only 19 years old. The body heals really well at that age. You know, Austin, one thing I liked about Austin in that fight was the dangerous submission game he was showing. You know, in the past, he hasn't had a chance to really show off how fantastic that submission game is. This time, he was really showing his abilities. Yeah, and we just hope he has a fast recovery and can get back onto the mat ASAP and Know, get back to fighting here at the U of MA or anywhere in general. 
Let's go for our official decision to Salvador the Ariana. man in the ring, Larry Langlis, brings a fight to halt one minute, five seconds into the second round. Your winner by technical knockout out of the blue corner, Rene Conan. Let's give it up for both these fighters, and we certainly wish your opponent the, a good recovery. Now, aside from an unfortunate ending, that was a great fight. We actually saw you grow and learn from your mistake in round one. From the slam, you ended up in the armbar. Round two, you ended up in a better position. Did you guys talk about that in your corner in between the rounds? I was talking about just, you know, keep my hands up the whole time. I knew I kept on dropping my hands, and that's when you got me that right hook. It almost dazed me, almost knocked me out right there. You know, but I still not to focus on that, you know? So I try to keep on going best as I can. Absolutely. It was a great fight, and, you know, we're excited to have you come back and fight again all the way through the fight. Yeah. You want to give a shout-out to all your friends and fans who came to support you? I'd like to thank my coworkers for coming out, you know, thank my you. family and all my selfish in fact, who yeah, came we'll out. I want to thank my trainer, Mike, and Chris, you know. I know Chris had a lot, but, you know, he still fought hard and everything, you know. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, guys. Give it up for him. Renee Kanat, that was a great fight. Your winner by round two, technical knockout, Renee Conat.